find the number of 9-digit positive integers in base 10 of the form a1, a2 all the way to a9, where a sub k is the kth digit from the left, that meet the following constraints. First, each digit is either 1, 2, or 3. Second, a1 is less than a2, is greater than a3, is less than a4, greater than a5. And you have this alternating signs of strict inequality until a sub 9. And a9, a8, a7, all the way to a1, the number obtained by reversing the digit is greater than a1, a2, all the way to a9. Before we attempt this charming problem, let's recognize Walker Powell, who was the very first person to correctly answer this challenge with the answer of 38 using a computer program, and you are more than welcome to read it if you wish. So here's the entire thing. But we are not going to approach this question using a computer program, although I actually used a computer program myself to check the answer after I created this question. But we are going to use a method of recursion to find the answer. So let's get started. And for now, we are going to ignore the final constraint. So we are going to be focusing only on the first two. But as we are about to find out, once we completely analyze which numbers fit the requirements for one and two, it's going to be very easy to figure out out of those numbers, which ones also fit the final constraint. Anyway, so we are only going to focus on the first two constraints and now realize that the only way our number can start is either with 1, 2, 1, 3, or 2, 3 because these are the only ways a sub 1 is less than a sub 2. And also realize this is a key thing to notice after 1, 2, or 1, 3, or 2, 3, we are going to have a shorter, we are going to have a shorter sequence of numbers or we are going to have a positive integer with less digits such that we are going to have this alternating sign property and each digit being 1, 2, or 3. And this property may persuade you to maybe think about using recursion to attack this question. And there are various ways of setting up this recursion. The way I did it when I was creating this was like this. I let b sub n be the number of n digit integers, n digit integers satisfying first constraint and the second constraint, so satisfying these two, that start with 1. Because as we have seen, every single n digit number where n is greater than or equal to 2 is either going to start with 1 or 2. So we can break it down to b sub n and c sub n which is going to be same as b sub n, except that we are now considering the numbers that start with 2. And what's the recursion going to be? Well, for b sub n, we are looking at the numbers that start with 1. We can either have 1, 2, then 1 has to come after 2 because we have to go down from 2. So we are going to have a shorter number, namely a number that's 2 digits shorter, that start with 1, and that's b sub n minus 2. And if we start with 1, 3, then we can either have a number that starts with 1, that's another b sub n minus 2, or we can have a number that starts with 2, that's 2 digits shorter. And that's precisely how we defined c sub n minus 2. So we know b sub n, let's write this down, is 2 times b sub n minus 2 plus c sub n minus 2. How about c sub n? Well, using the same reasoning, if you're starting with 2, we are going to start with 2, 3. So either 1 can follow it or 2 can follow it. So we can either have a b sub n minus 2 or c sub n minus 2. So now let's actually set up the table. So let's let this be n, b sub n, c sub n. And we are only looking at odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 9. 5, 7, 9, I meant to say, because we are going up till n equals to 9, and we only have to care about odd numbers, because this recursion formula jumps with step of 2 every time. And when you have one digit number, the number of these n digit integers satisfying 1 and 2 that start with 1, well, there is only one of them, namely 1. And c sub n, using the same reasoning, is going to be 1. 
2 is the only one digit number that starts with 2. And now we can repeatedly use this recursive relation to find all the way to B sub 9 and C sub 9. So for this number, we know we are multiplying this thing by 2 and adding this thing, which gets us 3. And C sub 3 is going to be B sub 1 plus C sub 1, which is 2. So for this number, you're multiplying this by 2, add it to this, getting us 8. This one, you're just adding these two. So now this number is going to be 16 plus 5, 21, 13. Then we have a 42 plus 13, 55, and 34. So we know the number of 9-digit integers that satisfy the first and the second constraint is going to be, it's either going to start with 1 or either going to start with 2. That's 55 plus 34, getting us 89. So we know we have 89 numbers to work with after looking at number 1 and number 2. Now let's go to number 3. A key insight that's going to help us out here is to realize that if a sub 1, a sub 2, all the way to a sub 9 satisfy the first two constraints, then a sub 9, a sub 8, all the way to a sub 1 also satisfy the first two constraints. Why? Well, if a sub 1 through a sub 9 contain 1, 2, or 3, then a sub 9 to a sub 1 obviously contain 1, 2, or 3. And also, because a sub 1 all the way to a sub 9 satisfies this inequality, just flipping it around gets us a sub 9 is less than a sub 8, is greater than a sub 7, all the way to a sub 2 being greater than a sub 1. So we know a9 all the way to a1 just from this also satisfy the second constraint. So for every a1 all the way to a9 counted in 89, we also counted the reverse number, a9 all the way to a1. Well, not quite, because if we were counting both of them, then this number would be even, not odd. How is this number odd? Well, there are these numbers called palindromes, numbers that read the same from left and right. So for example, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1 is a palindrome. It's the same number from the left and from the right. And these palindromes are counted only once in 89. Now it's pretty obvious how to approach this question. Obviously, we don't care about palindromes because we want this reverse number to be strictly greater than the original number. And also, if a1 all the way to a9 is not a palindrome, either this one is greater than the second one or the second one, the reverse, is greater than the original one. So all we have to do from this observation is we start with 89, we are going to take away number of palindromes to get everything down into pairs, and exactly half of the leftovers are going to be the numbers that we want. And you can either list out all the palindromes, or we can be creative once again. Because in palindrome, we are going to have a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, then a4, a3, a2, then a1. And realize that for every a1, a2, a3, a4, a5 that satisfy the first two constraints, we can flip it around and paste a4, a3, a2, a1 and obtain a 9-digit palindrome. And conversely, given a 9-digit palindrome, the first 5 digits is going to be a 5-digit integer that satisfy the first two constraints. Or, said another way, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between 9-digit palindromes and 5-digit numbers that satisfy the first two constraints. And we know the number of 5-digit numbers that satisfy our constraint is 13, so we know there are 13 palindromes. For every 5-digit sequence, we have one palindrome and vice versa. So we know this is 89 minus 13 over 2, also known as 76 over 2, and we get our final answer of 39. But before we finish up, I want to point out something interesting about these sequences of numbers and that they are members of Fibonacci numbers. And as you know, Fibonacci numbers start with 1, 1, then we have 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and it goes on and on and on. 1 is the first Fibonacci number, and 1 is also the second Fibonacci, then f sub 3, f sub, f sub 4, f sub 5, and so on. And you may ask, how are we getting these Fibonacci numbers? 
Well, C sub n is pretty obvious because we are going to be adding up 8 and 5 to get this 13 and 8 and 5 are members of Fibonacci numbers. So 13 is also going to be in the Fibonacci numbers. But how about B sub n where we are multiplying this number by 2 and adding it to this number? Well, 8 times 2 plus 5 is the same thing as 8 plus 8 plus 5 and 8 plus 5 is 13. So we are essentially adding up 8 and the next Fibonacci number, which is going to get us the Fibonacci number 2 after 8. So that's also going to get us the Fibonacci number. And since you're starting with 1, 1, we are going to have the sequence of Fibonacci numbers generated throughout our sequence. More explicitly, this is F sub 2, then we have F sub 4, this is F sub 6, F sub 8, F sub 10, and on the right side we have F sub 1, F sub 3, F sub 5, F sub 7, and F sub 9, and so on. So realize that our answer was F sub 10 plus F sub 9, and we took away the palindromes which had the same amount as B sub 5 plus C sub 5. So F sub 6 minus F sub 5, and we divided by 2 to find all 9 digit numbers that satisfy all of our constraints. Now, what if I ask you, how many 2001 digit numbers satisfy all of the constraints mentioned before? So we have a 2001 digit, so this string is going to go on, a sub 10, a sub 11, all the way to a sub 2001, and the same thing for this, you're looking at a sub 2001 all the way to a sub 1, and a sub 1 all the way to a sub 2001, and what is our answer going to be in this case? Well, using the same reasoning, we are going to get f sub 2002 plus f sub 2000 minus f sub, well, we are dividing 10 by 2 to get this 5. So we have F sub 1001 when you divide 2002 by 2. And this is going to be 1 more than that or 1002. And you can use your favorite mathematical software to find this number, which is this thing. So pretty long. I think it has more than 300 digits. So this is our answer if we are looking at 2001 digit numbers. Fascinating. Anyway. Our final answer to this particular question for the 9-digit case was 39.